Aging is this self-reflection. It is a really important part of being human because if we never do that, if we continue to say, I've got to be young, I've got to be out there, I've got to prove to everybody that I still have all my faculties and I still have energy, we never have a chance to pull back and say, what's this all about? Who am I? What's the world about? What does life mean? These are incredibly important questions that really only old people can answer. Hey, y'all, it's Costa. Today, I'm here with my guest, Kathleen O'Brien, advocate, educator, former television broadcaster and producer, and now author of Reclaiming Your Right to Grow Old. Kathleen, for listeners of the show, I know I've asked several guests this question, but I do believe it warrants asking again. Why are we so scared of getting old? Well, I think it's because this culture doesn't treat old people very well. I think it's mostly cultural. I did a lot of research for my book, and I was able to see how many cultures incorporate older people into their lives. And in fact, older people are central to decision-making in uh, Native American cultures and African cultures. But it's interesting, our culture, my theory is after doing all this research, we have a really can-do culture. We're a young country. We're enthusiastic. Our country was built on innovation and new ideas. So we prize youth in a way that maybe other countries don't as much, although you do see that in a lot of Western cultures. But I think more than maybe most cultures, um, we see a place for young people, for middle-aged people who can get out in the fray and make things happen. And I think people are afraid to age in our culture because we become kind of irrelevant as we get older. We are no longer in the fray. We probably don't always want to be, but there's a lot of pressure on older people to act young, be young, look young. And I think that's scary too. As you get older, you think, do I really have to do all of that? And my belief is no, you don't. I think it's, um, I think aging is perhaps the most important thing human beings do. It can be fun, it can be uh, revelatory. And uh, as someone who is 75, I'm enjoying it. That's awesome. And, and you know, there's so much emphasis in our society about aging independently. You know, it's like, it goes to exactly what you're saying. You know, everything that, that I come into contact with in the, in the long-term care industry, it's always about independence, independence, independence. And correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is it doesn't always have to be that somebody ages on their own independently without any support. And they're just like, you know, a, uh, like you said, a kind of a can do all the way to the, to the bitter end, so to speak. Is that, is that kind of framing it in the correct aspect? Yeah, Costa, it really is. I think, uh, in, in so many cultures and I, I will pull up the Asian culture as sure. an example in China, there is a law that says, you must visit your parents every so often. You must. Not yeah. only that, if they can't support themselves, you either have to bring them home with you or you have to support them. In other words, they're, it's more of a community. I right. think older people need community. We don't have to prove that we can do it on our own forever. I think it's okay to say, when you need a little help, I need a little help. And it's true that older people live longer when they are surrounded by community, when they have Absolutely. people with them and they interact daily. People who are isolated do not do as well, are, are not, uh, don't have the longevity of people who, uh, who enjoy that, uh, 
the wonderful closeness of other people around them. Your book, Reclaim Your Right to Grow Old, was published in 2021 Mm -hmm. and speaks candidly about the joy and freedom of enjoying your later years. In your experience, what's the best part of growing old? Well, you mentioned freedom, and I think that's really what it is. I feel freer now at 75 than I ever had in my life. Certainly much more free than I felt at 25. (laughs) (laughs) And part of it is certainly, you know, we become, as we get into the business world, we become part of organizations and there are rules and there is a hierarchy and we feel we have to succumb to all of that in order to advance. And I guess that's okay for that time in our lives. But as we get older and remove ourselves from all the chaos of working daily and all the responsibilities, that alone makes us feel freer. But also, and I see this among my friends, I have friends in their 70s and 80s, plenty of them, and they all say, I'm finally coming in to me, to who I was meant to be. They feel free to express their opinions. And believe me, I express mine. (laughs) (laughs) And um, they feel free to dress the way they want. I used to dress in a much more structured way. I was a broadcaster Mm -hmm. and I had my own business. And, you know, I dressed the way people did then. Uh, Yeah, like they expected you to, right? Yes. You have to have a certain amount of authority in your dressing. I no longer feel that. I don't wear nearly as much makeup (sighs) as I used to. I just feel a great sense of joy in coming into my own and letting go of the constraints of society. You do you as you get older. That's part of what it's all about. Can I, can I ask like, as you're, so, you know, obviously the, the age that everybody always brings up is 65. They're like, okay, Mm -hmm. you're, you know, once you're 65, then, you know, you're kind of like, you're not just going down the hill. You're just like kind of uh, coasting towards the end, so to speak. (laughs) But I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm just curious, like what made you decide to write a book Mm. about aging and getting older and embracing it, but also just putting a very like distinct spin on it. I know there's a question a little bit later on that gets a little more into the kind of the the through line of your book, but what made you want to write it to begin with? You know, I started this about, (laughs) I remember what I used to say, I started it 10 years ago. (laughs) Well, it's been 15 (laughs) years now, (laughs) as I was um, actually a little longer than that. As I was approaching 60, Costa, I said to myself, do I, as you pointed out, do I want to go down that downslope? Do I want to view the rest of my life as just kind of a toboggan ride into (laughs) oblivion? Or can I start looking at this differently? So I actually started doing some research on other cultures and what other thinkers through the ages have thought about aging. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, particularly Eastern cultures. Why, heavens, they view aging in such a different way. It's a privilege. It's an honor rather than, oh, I don't want to tell anyone my age and I need to get Botox and I have to do all these things to satisfy society rather than satisfying myself. So the more research I did, the more I thought, you know, aging has a purpose. There are stages in the cycle of life and Mm -hmm. we're I'm in that later stage, about to the end of the stage. I don't know about that. I think but, you've still got a long <laughs> way to go. <laughs> well, I may have a way to go, but yeah. um, but nonetheless, uh, I am in that later stage. And it's important because this is the opportunity we have to take the experience, wisdom, and perspective we've built up over all these years. Right. Right. And to reflect on our lives, to sit back and say, not only what could I have done differently, but also to accept what I did. That's who I was. 
Who mm-hmm. do I want to continue to be? And part of aging is this self-reflection. It is a really important part of being human because if we never do that, if we continue to say, I've got to be young, I've got to be out there, I've got to prove to everybody that I still have all my faculties and I still have energy, we never have a chance to pull back and say, what's this all about? Right. Who yeah, am like, I? Yeah. What's the you world get... about? What does life mean? Absolutely. These are incredibly important questions that really only old people can answer. I mean, you're speaking my language. I, I, I like it. But let's, oh. let's address the elephant in the room. Why do you think we obsess over youth when that's such a short and often painful part of our life while having the maturity and wisdom of age is such a dignified and rich way to experience life? Well, it is. And like I said, other cultures get it. I, yeah. <laughs> I have to say part of it, I think, is... Well, looking back, yes, it was stressful. And uh, I think part of being older is to remind younger people there's a longer runway there than you think. You don't have to stress over everything. Life is up and down and things will change. But I do think in this culture, one of the reasons we're so youth obsessed, even though it is a difficult time for a lot of people, is... um, We are very appearance-oriented. We think Mm. that young people and the way they look and the, you know, the fact that they are on top of the zeitgeist deciding what's cool and what isn't, we think that's incredibly important. And the marketing machine (laughs) that we have built up. I was going to say, it's for commerce. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we are a capitalist country. There's a lot of good about that. but. But the downside is that we do try to market to everyone and the marketing, the useful image is a billion dollar, many billions of dollars business. So that's why you see things all the time for I, we can, you know, whether it's uh, tummy tucking underwear or, you know, face creams or face sure. lifts. Or, right. And then we see people in, uh, on social media who look fantastic and we think, oh, maybe I should be doing that. So it's this constant feeling that I have to keep up with everyone. And even though when we look back at our own lives, we think, that wasn't always so great. Right. I'm much happier now. Yeah. You know what I find fascinating? So, and, and please, if I say anything ignorant or if you need to stop me and educate (laughs) me on anything, don't hesitate to do that. Okay. Okay, Cause I, so far you're doing very well. Okay. Well, I'm not an expert. So, but I, I've, I have been watching a show called the morning show. Uh-huh. Uh, it's on Apple TV and two of the characters, Jennifer Aniston and, um, yes, yes. Uh, Renee, no, not Renee. Zellweger. No, it's not her. It's, um, oh my gosh. She's from, uh, anyway, I digress. She's from sweet home, Alabama. She's from Knoxville, Tennessee, oh, blonde hair. Okay. Anyway, it'll come to me at some point later in the episode. So as I'm watching the show and there's a couple of emotional dramatic scenes in the show, And both characters are in their late 50s, early 60s. -hmm. Um, I think Jennifer Aniston is about 55. I think that's about right. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of, you could tell that they have a lot of Botox because it's hard for them to make facial expressions when they cry. (laughs) Oh, and no. it's But it's so pronounced and it's fascinating to watch because you're thinking to yourself like, this, they're really trying here. And it's hard, like, they, it's unnatural. But I think it's just to your point in the sense that Reese Witherspoon, that's the other actor. Reese, yes, yes. she's terrific, and, and, yeah. Yeah, and it, I think it, it speaks to your point in the sense that we have, we have put everything um, aside when it comes to looking young and feeling yes. young and projecting a youthful image. 
and you know, it's, it goes back to obviously people in Hollywood have said this for a very long time, but you know, it's like, if you don't look a certain way, you're not going to get parts or you're not going to get work. And it translates in the same aspect to just regular business in the business community. You know, it's, we don't find value for some reason in the experience and the patience and the virtues Mm -hmm. that time brings. We see it right now in, in our political debates, you know, for some reason, ageism has actually reared its ugly head and has supplanted itself as a talking point for the first time, in my opinion, I I think in my lifetime. I think that's true in my lifetime. I think I've lived a little longer than you. And I have to say, I agree with you. (laughs) I, you know, it's interesting. I had, um, A family member of my extended family, I have a pretty big extended family, who Mm -hmm. said to me the last time we were together, she said, I don't know any woman over 35 who does not get Botox. Over 35. And I said, you're kidding. She said, nope. And she does it too. And some of these family members I have, I'm not related to them, so I can say this. They are gorgeous. They don't oh, yeah. need anything. <laughs> right. But, right. you know, they do that. And yet I find women my age, and maybe it's just my social circle, the women that I kind of hang out with. Sure. They are not into any kind of... I don't know, artificial help in looking younger. Yeah. And they're not particularly worried about their bodies getting older. I Part of it is as we age, we do accept more. We are much more accepting and we adapt much better to things that happen to us than it, heavens if I were 25 and saw wrinkles and, oh, I would have been beside myself. But as you get older, it's like the stages of grief, Costa. You know, at first you say, that's not happening to me. And then you get mad about it. And then you bargain. Well, maybe I will get a little boat. Then after a while, you just go, ah. Right. It's fine. I'm used to it now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go. Yeah. Let's let's talk about the American culture specifically. Mm. Do you think that as a culture we're changing the way that we perceive and value our elder generations? I think it's getting better. Good. And I think people like you are helping. Good. I like to think my book is helping in a tiny way. Um yes, in fact. I am beginning to see and have read stories, for instance, in the Wall Street Journal about companies, cosmetic and beauty companies, backing away from the term anti-aging. Okay. They, yeah. they That's Some great. of them have dropped it because there is this burgeoning pro-aging movement. Mm-hmm. And women in particular are a little annoyed that they're supposed to be perpetually youthful. It's too much work. Well, it's It's, too expensive. It's terribly expensive. Yeah. And sometimes I haven't gone through it, but I understand that it can be painful to have Mm -hmm. all these things done. Right. So I think we are beginning to see that. And I do think that that older people are beginning to value elderhood in a way that maybe they didn't 50 years ago. Well, we are living longer, and for the most part, we're healthier, and I think that's a good thing. I still, though, I still hear these kind of ageist comments, uh, you know, like, oh, so-and-so is 75 years young, and I want to say, in fact, sometimes I do say, because <laughs> I'm older and I can. Sure. Uh, I say, you know, it's 75 years old, and mm-hmm. I'm happy to be 75 years old. I have lived this long. I am not young. I may be a youthful 75, and in my research, I discovered, yes, we all do age differently, and there are a variety right. of factors that go into it. One of them is luck. It's not all lifestyle. It's luck. It's uh, socioeconomic conditions. There are a lot of things that go into it. 
but we don't all age the same, but we are still growing old. And to pretend like someone is young when he or she is 85 is absurd. <laughs> it's just silly. Well, and, and here's the thing, though. It may very well be changing in the community of people over a certain age, but yeah. the 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 younger demographic, so like the people who are essentially being marketed to, you know, like like crazy, you know, whether it's on social media or it's on TV, or it's, you know, buy this, buy this, buy this, mm-hmm. go work here. Do, I mean, it's just like a complete rat race, right? So is it changing in that generation? That is a very good question. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure this woman I had the conversation with in my family who said that, you know, everybody she knows over 35 is getting Botox, and she admitted she was too. I think they're still kind of caught up in it. But I will say, I think older people have a responsibility to let younger people know that it's okay to age. And part of that is telling people your age. I always tell people my age. I want people to know this is what 75 looks like, feels like. This is what a 75-year-old does. Not all 75-year-olds. I was going to say, sign me up. Well, uh, yes, sign you up because someday you're going to be there and you're going to be happy about it. I'll be on the other side of the camera. (laughs) I don't know. I think you could be in front of it, frankly. But, um, yeah, I think it's incumbent upon us to set Mm -hmm. that uh, stage, to let people know that it's really okay. When we pretend that we're younger than we are, or we don't tell anybody. I read obituaries where a, an age isn't mentioned. And I said this to someone one time, huh. and she said, oh, my mother would never want anyone to know how old she was. She's dead, okay? Right. It's really okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you trying to impress at this point? Yeah. So, um Yeah, I I do think part of it uh, is our responsibility as older Mm -hmm. folks to let younger folks know that a great stage of life lies ahead and look forward to it. I mean, I feel so much better now after having this conversation. I'm just going to be honest with you because it's been a long day. So (laughs) I feel refreshed and ready. (laughs) <laughs> You're still in the fray. You're still out there working and competing. And I can say this because I'm not. Yeah, so. I love it. So this is a topic I've heard quite a bit of discourse around lately. And I want to know your thoughts. What is successful aging and what does it look like for you personally? Well, I think successful aging, again, goes back to the sure. importance of this stage in life. And I don't think we are successful agers if we deny where we are and try to pretend that we are younger than where we are. I think to be successful at it, we have to take care of ourselves. Certainly the health aspect is important and health becomes more and more important as we get older. I didn't think about it much when I was younger, but I do think about it more now. I try to exercise as much as I can and do things that keep my mind active. So Mm -hmm. that stuff is important. We don't have to run marathons when we're 90 if we don't want to. It's okay to say no to anything you don't want to do at this point in your life. But successful aging to me is really that part where, and it's unique to older people, that ability to look inward, that ability. And and actually, I think we have an obligation to give advice to younger people, not necessarily unwanted advice, though I've been known to do it. (laughs) That's okay. But, uh, you know, to let, if nothing else, to let them know that, things are going to be okay, that I've lived a life and I've seen ups and downs and I've been through ups and downs, but there is a certain equanimity that comes after a while and and you kind of see the gray and the black and white. And I think this process, 
It's called gentling. It's actually, gerontologists call it this. It's the ability of older people to relax a situation, to take mm -hmm. the stress and chaos out of it. Uh, and I think that's part of successful aging, too. If we can help younger people feel better about themselves, if we can pick up the grandchild who's crying, having a temper tantrum because the parents are going crazy, but we've been <laughs> through it. So we pick up the child, we rock the child, we kiss the child, we take the child somewhere so that the child is uh, no longer in that particular uh, sure. situation state, at the yeah. moment, and we calm everything down. That's part of successful aging, too. So again, it's not about being what you were when you were 50. It's about being a true elder in every sense. If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at 25 years old and at 50 years old, hmm. what would you tell yourself? Oh, wow. At 25 years old, I would tell myself, you have a heck of a lot more time than you think you do. You think you've got to hurry up, find a husband, have a great job, do all these things. You do not have to do all that at 25. You've got plenty of time to figure out what you want to do, to try several careers, which I did end up doing. And, uh, you know, just relax over it. And at 50, I would tell myself the same thing. And I would also tell myself that being old is something you should look forward to. You're going to be amazed how good you're going to feel about yourself in 25 years. So I think both times I would, and I think a lot of older people I know would say the same thing, I would encourage that younger people to person to feel better about herself that's and part relax. of being an elder yeah i mean i'd say i'd say that i need more believe it or not even though i work in this in this space it's hard for me to go come into a lot of contact with people that are that kind of share the same mindset that you do you know, there's a lot of yeah. people who get to a certain age and they have that that's that feeling of isolation and they're not as optimistic as you are. Um, but here's the thing. There's a lot of there's a lot of points that you made specifically about being able to interject into into younger generations and you said something just a few minutes ago about just relax. Mm. You know, you tell your 25 year old self to oh, relax. I would, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, there's moments where I have a conversation with somebody who's in their seventies and eighties and, you know, they kind of, they, they, they take your hand mm. and it's like the world just kind of stops. Mm. And I think to myself a lot of times, like, I wish I could just do that with, by myself, like, just literally just take my own hand and the world just kind of stops and the, and the temperature goes down and everything slows down a little bit and we can all just relax. I think, honestly, I don't know how you can delineate this message to the masses. I hope that it's through this podcast, but <laughs> more people need to hear what you have to say. Oh, thank you. To relax. It is very hard at your age at the point in your life where you're doing all these things and creating things and working hard um, to step back and do that. It's hard because you're mm -hmm. in it. Whereas an older person can look at it much more objectively mm -hmm. um, because that doesn't mean I don't do things. I mean, well, I'm I mean, writing yeah. a novel right now and there are things that I get involved in. That means I don't, but I don't have that need to be competitive anymore, mm -hmm. which I think is enormously stressful. And I, yeah. that's why we need older people, Costa. You need an Absolutely. older person to take your hand and tell you it's going to be fine. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So in your book, you tell readers to not age gracefully. And I love this <laughs> a lot because it can mean so many different things. Yeah. Why should we not be worried about aging gracefully? Well, first of all, I think when someone says uh, so-and-so is aging gracefully, I think that's kind of ageist, if you will. 
uh, we don't tell little kids, be a little kid gracefully. So right. what it implies is there's something wrong with growing old. So you need to do it gracefully. Mm-hmm. It also implies that I need to age gracefully so that I don't upset or offend anybody <laughs> with my aging self. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, aging is natural. It is mm-hmm. a part of being a human being. And I, if people don't like it, well, give them 25 years and <laughs> see how they feel about <laughs> it then. It out. <laughs> but yeah, it's like you're doing it for someone else. Oh, I need to be graceful about aging. No, right. you don't. You just be you when you age. If you're in a good mood, fine. If you're not, that's okay. If you have something to say, say it. Uh, if you want to wear a crazy outfit because you think it's kind of fun, do it. You don't have to be graceful to appease anyone. You right. have to make yourself happy first. Yeah. So we always like to end the show with a call to action. Okay. If you could have one sentence printed on the back of everyone's Medicare card on how to enjoy growing old, what would it be? We honor your wisdom maturity, and your lifetime of experience. We honor it. And I want every older person to think about that. I want young people to honor them. And I want old people, when they turn that card over, every time they look at it, we honor you for wisdom, maturity, and experience. 